The interesting thing about silver and gold is simply by stacking those metals, you're financially prepping. But when it comes to prepping, that's only one base that you absolutely need to cover. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. Today, I wanted to talk about stacking silver and also gold, but ways you can prepare in the meantime if you feel like spot price is a little bit too high to be going full throttle. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also, subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. Use promo code SANTA for a 15% discount until Christmas. So today, I wanted to talk about the spot price of silver primarily. I also want to talk a little bit about gold as well. Now, anybody who has been paying attention to what spot price has been doing these last couple of days, you will know that starting Sunday night, we saw the spot price of silver start to climb up. It went up to about $26. Then all day yesterday, it was in the 2650s range, I believe it was. I think it was actually closer to $27 than 26. Now, here we are one day later, and it's back down to the $25 range. And gold hasn't really been moving all that much. We're looking at gold in the 1850 to 1860 range somewhere around there now it's obviously going to be fluctuating i'm posting this video on tuesday evening and i'm filming it earlier in the day so who knows what the spot price is going to be by the time i edit by the time i post or by the time you watch but silver 25 26 bucks and gold around the 1860 range let's just say so this video was actually inspired by a question that i had received earlier today i'm not going to read the entire thing but it was from somebody who was wondering since they had just recently started stacking silver and gold and the spot price has gone up since they started stacking not exactly sure if they want to continue converting their dollars into silver with the spot price being about 26 dollars an ounce if they should focus on gold instead or continue going about half and half, a little bit of silver, a little bit of gold, even though they feel like silver is out of their comfort zone. So I wanted to respond to that question today. And I'm not even going to go into detail about why I think it's a bad idea to try to time the market because I made an entire video talking about just that probably not even a week ago. So if anybody wants to know how I feel about trying to time the market, go check out that video. It was posted just a couple of days ago. But I want to respond to this today and talk about some other areas that you can focus on if you feel like the spot price is out of your comfort zone. And by the way, this question was asked by a VIP club member. I'm making this whole video specifically to answer the question. I try to do as much as I can for VIP club members, privately held live streams, giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts, and they can watch all of my YouTube videos early and commercial free. Link in the description if anybody wants to join. But this is what I wanted to focus on today. Silver being in the $26 range, if you feel like $26 is a little bit too high for you, I mean, congratulations, silver's down today. You asked the question when silver was $26 and now it's in the $25 range. However, spot price isn't everything that we need to take into consideration, especially in 2020. So if we see the spot price at $25 an ounce or $26 an ounce, that doesn't mean we're going to get silver for $25 or $26 an ounce. It's going to be closer to $30, if I'm going to be honest with you, $27, $28, $29, $30 potentially because of the premiums. Now, if you feel like silver is out of your comfort zone or if you feel like it's too high up and you want to wait for a dip or wait for a pullback or wait for it to drop down, you got to understand the risk with that because a pullback, a dip, or anything related to the spot price lowering isn't guaranteed. It's not promised. And fact of the matter is this could potentially be the lowest we ever see silver go again it's not set in stone that it's going to be 24 then 23 then 22 then 21 dollars over the next couple of months it could potentially start to climb and we never see it this low again so you got to understand that but make sure you're not being controlled by the fear of missing out if you want more silver and you're comfortable converting your dollars into silver but it's getting to that point where it's slightly out of your comfort zone 
you can do what I've been doing, which is slowing it down ever so slightly. Now, I don't believe in stopping altogether. I don't believe in stopping anything. I believe in slowing it down if that makes more sense. If you don't want to convert close to $30 just for a troy ounce of silver, you can slow it down a little bit. You can cut back, maybe focus on a little bit more gold instead. That's what I've been doing these last couple of months. I have been stacking as much silver as I can get my hands on, but I reduced the amount of dollars that I'm converting into silver so I can get a little tiny bit more gold. And obviously I'm stacking both metals, but if you feel like precious metals in general are getting too pricey for you, you gotta understand that precious metals are only one section of general preparation, at least in my opinion. The interesting thing about silver and gold is simply by stacking those metals, you're financially prepping. But when it comes to prepping, that's only one base that you absolutely need to cover. There's absolutely nothing wrong with taking a little bit of a step back away from silver and gold. You could still pick up your fair share of coins, rounds, and bars if that's what you want to do. But something you can do while you're waiting for the spot price to drop back down. Remember, it's not guaranteed that it's going to drop back down. But if you want to continue picking up silver and gold, but a little bit at a time, just so you're staying busy, staying productive, something you can do while you wait is save up a little bit of cash. That way, if you do see spot price go down, you can go and grab a bunch more. And while you're saving up some cash, maybe you can build up and stock up on some of your other preps. Like I said, the silver and the gold, that's financial prepping. But there's a lot of other ways to prep as well, especially with everything that 2020 has taught us. There's a lot of people prepping right now. There are more people prepping this year than probably ever before, or at least over the last couple of decades, I would say. More people are preparing right now for the first time in their lives. 2020 woke a lot of people up to the fact that you got to be prepared. Of course, we all want to hope for the best, but you got to prepare for the worst. And best case scenario, you end up stocking up on things that you don't necessarily need but it's better to have something and not need it than to need something and not have it. Let me explain. Food preps. Great example. You don't want to go with stuff that's going to expire really quick. You don't want to go for anything with a short shelf life. If you're going to be food prepping, your best bet would probably be either freeze-dried stuff or canned goods or potentially boxed pasta or the soups, the beans or anything like that, the big bags of rice, things like that, things that will last an absurdly long time. I'm talking about months to potentially years. You can always get some MREs if that's what you want to do. You can absolutely do that. You can get yourself a food dehydrator. I wouldn't say go out and get a freeze dryer because those are thousands and thousands of dollars sometimes if you get a food dehydrator like the one i have i'll leave it linked in the description in case anybody was curious what it looks like or how exactly it works but that's how i dry out mainly fruits you can dry out the vegetables you can dry out meats and stuff like that but i use it mostly for fruits just to make them last longer because fruits suck you buy them and like four or five days they're already starting to go bad so if you dehydrate them it removes the moisture from inside them there are two main components that make fruits and vegetables go bad one would be the water inside and the second would be the air outside so if you remove one of those two components or potentially both of the components if you dehydrate it or freeze dry it and then you put it in a vacuum sealable bag that stuff will last you as close to forever as possible but it's also important to remember food prepping is only one base that you need to cover do you have water if you don't have water do you at least have a method of water purification do you have a filtration system is it portable is it something that requires electricity mine personally i'll leave it linked in the description it's the berkey that i always talk about water purification it sits on my countertop it's portable it doesn't need to plug into anything it's not electric it's not attached to the sink or anything like that i can toss it in the back seat of my car if i wanted i could bring it out if a family's going to uh, i don't know some picnic or a barbecue or something like that i can bring it from 
my house to a different person's house. It's portable. It's not that big and it's not heavy or anything like that unless it's full of water. Water purification. That's something you can do while you're waiting, while you are stacking the silver and the gold. If spot price is a little bit beyond what you are personally comfortable converting a bunch of your dollars into, there's nothing wrong with picking up a little bit of silver and gold just to stay productive, just to stay busy. I think it's really important to stay consistent. I think consistency beats almost anything else that there is. So if you wanna stay consistent with the precious metal stacking, but you wanna cut back a little bit, you can allocate your resources elsewhere. And by that, I mean you could put your dollars into something else. You can spend it on something that'll save you money in the long run, such as a food dehydrator, such as a water purification system. And those are just a couple examples of things that you can do when you are trying your best to stay prepared. Because it's important to remember, the silver and the gold are excellent ways of financially preparing, but there are more ways to prepare than just with the finances. That's just one realm. That's just one pillar. That's just one base that you need to cover. I would rather have a little bit of everything than a whole bunch of just one thing and fall short in all of these other areas. So even if that means you're not getting nearly as much silver and gold as you want to get, I think it's important to stay as prepared as possible in general. All of the different bases, all of the different factors, you gotta take a step back and evaluate what you have, what you need, what your strengths are, and what your weaknesses are. When you figure out what your strengths are, make sure you maintain them. When you figure out what your weaknesses are, you know what you need to strengthen, what you need to focus on, and what you need to build up or stock up on. So hopefully this video was somewhat insightful. I didn't wanna to go too big into why I don't believe in timing the market because I made an entire video talking about that just a couple of days ago. In short, it's because I don't think waiting for spot price to do anything that isn't promised and isn't guaranteed is all that productive. I've made the mistake in the past where I said, hey, you know what, I'm not gonna get any silver today. I'm gonna wait until tomorrow. Spot price might be lower by then. And then I go to sleep and I wake up the next morning and spot price is higher than where it was the day before. I've made the mistake in the past and the only thing that it got me was time wasted. And I do believe that saving money is important. I understand why people want to prioritize waiting for a dip or waiting for a pullback or waiting for spot price to drop down a little bit. It saves them a little bit of money, or should I say, saves them a little bit of currency, a little bit of fiat, it might save them a dollar bill or two. But to me, in my opinion and from my perspective, I think it's more important to save time than it is to save money. Of course I try to save money. Of course I preserve my wealth. I put my dollar bills into silver and gold for a reason and I try to stack as aggressively as possible for a reason. But if you end up losing money or if you end up feeling like you wasted money, at least you can go to work tomorrow and make some of that money back. There's nowhere in the world you can go. There's nothing in the world you can do to get your time back. That's something that I learned, something that I realized, and something that I prioritize. I try to save as much time as possible. It's your most valuable asset, more valuable than your silver, more valuable than your gold. Time is fleeting, time is going away, and there's nothing you can do about it. Silver and gold, it's here, it's been here for thousands of years. It'll be here long after we're gone, but your time, that's just the one thing you are unable to get back. So I try to prioritize that and make sure to save as much of it as I possibly can. So head on down to the comments and let me know what are your thoughts on everything that I shared in today's video? What would you say to someone that wants to stack silver and gold? They're gonna continue stacking the silver and the gold, but they feel like spot prices, maybe I don't wanna say out of reach for them. They're still able to get silver and gold, but it's at that point where it's almost out of their comfort zone. What would you say to someone like that? Would you say, get all the silver, all the gold, no matter what, and don't worry about anything else? Or would you say, continue stacking if that's what you wanna do, maybe slow it down a little bit and use the dollar bills that you're cutting back on to put towards some of your other preps and covering some of your other bases. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic when it comes to the precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller, easier to manage. I'm also doing giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of the YouTube videos commercial free. 
Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to subscribe. New videos every single day, 365 days a year. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 2,000 subscribers. We just hit 1,500, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stacken t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver kraken coin which by the way is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you it comes out of my pocket not yours and of course the limited edition dydss christmas line which is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for saint jude children's research hospital only available until christmas get one while you can any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below thank you in advance it's more than appreciated. Don't forget to use the promo code SANTA for a 15% discount, only for the next couple of days. And once again, I want you guys to head on down in the comments and let me know, what are your thoughts on general preparation? Do you focus entirely on silver and gold? Do you feel like you're falling short in other areas that you should or could be preparing yourself in? When it comes to the food preps, when it comes to a water supply and or water purification. And by the way, those aren't the only things that we got to worry about. There's also medical supplies, first aid kits and stuff like that. There's a lot of different ways you can prepare yourself. Do you feel like you are properly preparing to the best of your ability, generally speaking, or is your attention primarily on the financial preparation, the silver and gold coins, rounds, and bars. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.